I'm getting goosebumps out of that. Today I'm going to be breaking down a song called Footsteps of Doom from the Attack on Titan original soundtrack. You wanted it, you have in it. And boom. Startled me a little bit. Okay. Starting super big, wall of sound right from the get go. The Bram and then the combination with the bass. That was badass. I like that a lot. These are supposed to be the footsteps. That's so cool. Oh my god. God, this core progression is so dark. Mate, I got I'm getting goosebumps out of that. What the hell? Released all the tension. This is the lowest point of energy. Well, not really. There were some silences before. <laughs> the tubular bells. The low end sounds so mean. These choirs, I I like this. This is the kind of choirs that I like a lot. Like in the lower mids to the mid range. Oof. That's so cool. Ooh, that court right there. Oh. I like that arrangement of the brass a lot.
Oh, the choir is made. They kill me. <laughs> I got goosebumps out of that again. And that's the, that's the resolution of it, isn't it? It, it ends with the with the footsteps. The the percussion arrangement mimicking the footsteps. That was so cool. All right. Let's break it down. Footsteps of Doom is one of those songs that I think bring the premise of more is more and less is more and actually make them work together very well and in a very balanced way. One of the obvious qualities that the song has is of course that it's a big wall of sound, the production is super huge. But also, like I said before, it's it has arrangements in it that is about the less is more and I'm talking very specifically about the, the precaution arrangement that there is in the track that is trying to mimic the footsteps of the titans but I'm going to be talking more in depth about that later. The song also has very open arrangements uh, with long sustained notes. Surprisingly enough, well, or maybe not, the strings are very tamed in this song but at the same time I think it actually works very well for it because I would say that the spearhead that the song has is everything that is happening in the low end, like the brams, the bass, and I would say the choirs play a huge role in the track, which I'm going to be talking more in depth later. The strings are either do doing unisons, uh, arra unison arrangements, uh, meaning that it's playing the same thing as, as other uh, sections of the orchestra, like for example the brass and whatnot, or doing some very tame uh, mono melodies in a way, counter mono melodies in a way, here and there to add some se some sense of of, of uh, balance in between the openness and more contrived nature of of you know as picado arrangements in the song. What the hell, mate! It's like he moves and it's a it's some tiny nuke. What the hell? Don't show. Don't. Sh That's gonna happen. It, it's the kid is going. Oh, mate. This is brutal. Another very interesting thing about the song is that it has a waltz feel. It's not necessarily like a straightforward waltz, but it has a feel of it, because in some parts of the song I was counting the measure, and I think it's in 3-4. I don't know if the whole song is in 3-4, but right from the intro of the song you can start counting like 1-2-3, 1-2-3. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, you know? And it's that uh, dancey sort of feel that is underneath the track. And I don't know if this is sort of uh, a, a storytelling that is imbued within the song, like it's the dance of death, like the the, the track is uh, is a sim is a symbol of of a dance of death sort of thing now talking more specifically about the things that i really liked about the song is for example you know in the in the opening we hear the the uh, the this uh play in between the brams and the electronic bass alternating in between each other i thought i thought that was a very cool arrangement in there and also i really like how the brams are within the mix of a song, you know, they are not insanely overpowering or whatnot, but they they feel ever present when they are in the song. The other thing that I probably caught my attention the most was the choir arrangement, okay? Because it, this is probably my favorite part of the whole track, because we hear that there are certain arrangements in the song in which we hear the choirs isolated from all the other layers in the track, very much to create that sense of tension, you know, to to start to, to they the song releases the tension and then plays the isolated choirs to have this as in, uh, incredible sense of tension and doom within the track, and then it, the song starts building up with more layers ex and explodes again. However, this is not the reason why I like the choirs so much. I like them because they are not like in, in a very insane high uh, register, you know? They are very in the mid-range to the low mid-range. Uh, they are not so overpowering, you know? They are, don't sound like ear-piercing so much. 
And that's the kind of choirs that I like the most, you know? Like, for example, the best example that I can give, it's like, you, you know, the choirs that you would hear in the monastery. You know? And also, I will say that the choirs, in a way, they are also trying to give you some up, something about the storytelling of a track. It, it seems like it's almost like an epitaph of humanity, you know? Like, the choirs are, are reciting the epitaph of humanity. Like, humanity is done. The Titans won, or the Titans are about to win. Uh, so the choirs are like this uh, swan song in a way. The other very very cool element that there is in the track is the percussion mimicking the footsteps of the titans. And this is the instance in which I was talking the less is more kind of situation because it, in a way the lowest point of energy in the track because we only have one layer involved is just like a timpani, you know? And there is silences in between the, the, the hits, you know, the beat. Most of the time, silences create a lot of tension by themselves. Because when you don't hear anything, it's like it, it gives... It, it, it leaves the listener wondering what is about to happen. So you have that... A, li a little bit of that uh, uh, premise right there. But also you have the premise of listening to the, the percussion arrangement, which is mimicking the footsteps. And it's like this looming doom that is approaching you with each step so that kind of creative uh, genius you know it, it's so cool it, it's like you feel like the titans are coming for you with each step that they take and as the song goes along the song actually turns darker and darker as it goes i'm following that same premise you know of the titans with each footstep coming towards you you know you're about to Humanity is about to be wiped out. That means that the end is near. Like, you feel like the, the tempo of the song rises up. The, the, it, that autom automatically gives you the sense that the, the stakes of, of, of what's happening in the anime are higher. And, it's, uh, in, and in terms of the whole story of the track, it's like the Titan or the Titans... We're approaching you step by step, step by step, and step by step. And eventually, they are getting to you just very close enough in the outro. And then you have the resolution of the track, which is the footstep, the footsteps themselves. So in a way, it's sort of unresolved in a way. And the cool thing is that the outro gives you the sense or the sensation that is about to end, like it's done, humanity is done, the titans won. But when you hear the the footsteps again at the end, it's like, okay, apparently there's still a chance, you know? So it's not necessarily resolved in the, in the victory of the titans, like there's still hope, but it's very, very bleak, the situation overall. I'm gonna give this track an S tier. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, check out this other Attack on Titan breakdown that I did. 
And if you would like to support my work further, you can check the support section in the description of this video, where you can find my Patreon and all the other links, alright? Thank you very much.